Hi there, Steve Coffin. I just wanted to put this brief uh, introduction in here before my video today because, uh, as you know, I'm in the middle of my Arabic challenge. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I don't necessarily always feel that my speaking is improving. Uh, maybe I spoke better before when I was focusing on the mini stories, but I am accum accumulating vocabulary and enjoying my, my podcast. But when I started on the challenge back in early September, I had a conversation with John Filson an American who has spent a lot of time in Iraq and it was very interesting and I just thought it would be useful here to show you that interview where he talks about Iraq, his experience there and we talk about the differences between uh, Iraqi Arabic and uh, modern standard Arabic. Arabic, the language, the culture, the history is a wonderful experience. I very much recommend it to anyone and but I'm staying on my standard Arabic uh, for now at any rate. Okay, here's the video. Okay, today we're going to talk about Arabic because I've been learning Arabic. In fact, for the 90 day challenge, I've decided to put my Persian aside and focus on Arabic. And today I have the pleasure of talking to John Filson, who has a very rich background of experience in Arabic. And we're going to talk about the wonders of learning Arabic and all of its different variations. And at the end or in the middle, at some point, we're going to try and speak to each other. John is a fluent speaker of Iraqi Arabic. I am a struggling speaker <laughs> of Fusha and we're going to see how far we go. Remember, if you like these videos, please subscribe. There's a little bell there. If you, you know, tick it, you're going to get notifications. And if you like learning languages the way I do, come and visit us at Link. Hello, John. Can you briefly tell us about yourself and your background in Arabic? Okay, and, and we will, as I said, we're going to experiment a little bit uh, because it's all a mystery to me. I'm discovering the language. But the one thing that I find with Arabic is, is first of all, you know, you've got English and Chinese and Spanish that are recognized as these widely spoken languages. But Arabic, there's like 400 million people who speak Arabic. And what I have found, you know, before I started into Arabic, I heard, well, you know, each language is different and stuff. And I see the unity. I've listened to Lebanese movies and Egyptian movies and I was in Morocco and yeah, they're all different and different, difficult to understand, but you can see how they're all part of one. And, and maybe that's the advantage of having studied Fusha, that I see the extent to which they're so recognizably part of that one large, very rich uh, language community. Have you, have you spoken to people from Lebanon and from Egypt and to what degree can, or from the Gulf? Iraq is almost the Gulf anyway. To what extent do you understand them? Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Right, right. Leave it off, yeah. Right. Yep. I'll walk it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. 
Well, you know, and that's very similar to, say, uh, Mandarin and Cantonese. If you're into more serious, you know, the news or anything like that, it's essentially the same words pronounced differently, but it's the same words. Whereas the day-to-day chit-chat is going to ha- have a lot more different words in it. Uh, we'll probably try to show uh, perhaps the, the Arab world, you know, the from the, the Levant, call it, you know, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, uh, Egypt, back into Iraq. We'll throw a map up. Hopefully we can get this up there down to, uh, you know, Mauritania and Sudan. I mean, it's a vast area where people speak Arabic. And the other thing to remember about Arabic too is while Islam is a very big part of our, uh, of the Arabic culture today, there are lots of Christian Arabs. Uh, the Jews in Israel, when I was there, there was a I- Jewish Iraqi wedding it was Arabic, like everything about the way they behaved and the language they spoke, those are also Arabs. So you have Jewish Arabs, Christian Arabs, and of course, Muslim Arabs. And, and in Jordan, when I visited Petra, th- this is a wonderful world heritage site that predates Islam. So, so the Arab world is not limited to Islam, even though, of course, and, and Islam is not limited to the Arabic world, but there's a lot more there uh, to discover. Uh, in terms of culture and so forth. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's, that's the amazing thing. If you, you were in Iraq, you'll have to tell us where you were, but you're basically in the cradle of civilization where everything started. And I learned through my Persian learning that large portions of Iraq were part of Persia at different times. That Baghdad, apparently the word Baghdad is a Persian origin. So, you know, there's a lot of interrelations there. I mean, with the Kurds and you got Arabs in per, in Iran. And, and so it's, you know, and, and that's, Part of the joys of learning these languages is to discover the history and the culture. And, and where were you located in, in Iraq? Okay. Uh, but, uh, but also in Turkish and Greek. <laughs> Dolmades or whatever they call them, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 Do some of those Christians speak Aramaic? Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Is Aramaic a little closer to Hebrew? <laughs> right. 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 Okay. 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 (laughs) Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
right right wow i mean there's just so much to discover and i mean it is a multi ethnic multicultural multi religious uh even just in terms of sunni and shia uh community with this tremendous amount of history and stuff like that um should we try to speak some arabic and i have to confess that i don't your your approach to learning it is quite different from mine because you are in amongst them speaking it and i'm far away from any arabic speakers and i just listen to these podcasts now i've moved through my mini stories to where i listen to podcasts that i have transcribed and I follow events in the Middle East, uh, you know, the Arab, uh, the, at least the uh, UAE and the Israeli agreement. And so I, they all are there. Did you find in uh, Iraq, if you have a panel discussion on radio or television, they all speak at the same time? <laughs> For sure. Oh, yeah. سا سا يتحدث في اللغة العربية. آها أنا أنا أيضا أحاول أن ااا يتكلم في اللغة العربية ولكن أنا لا لا عندي فرصة كثيرا ل يتحدث في ال في العربية لأنني لا يوجد كثيرا من الناس التي يتحدث في في اللغة العربية في في فانكوفر. Right. 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 Okay. Okay, I ولكن لا أفهم كثيرا أفهم عشرين بالمئة إذا عكرة نفس ال نفس ال نس أنا أستطيع أن أن أفهم نف نصف how do you say نصف 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 half you know نصف نصف What's touchy? Tete <laughs> Kellum? A touchy. Okay, I couldn't figure out what you were talking about. Touchy. Aha, uh -huh. touchy. A touchy. Touchy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, touchy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm, Taxi, okay. Mm hmm, okay. Okay. 
<laughs> some of it what throws me off i you know like sometimes they say curse sometimes they say cho and uh, you were saying that uh, uh, something about learning through reading and uh, you were speaking and I, the trouble is i'll run through some where i understand the words and i hit titchy or i hit something that, that makes no sense and i find that and, and i think we've kind of demonstrated your arabic is i love it i think you're accent i can't judge iraqi arabic but it sounds really authentic to me so the problem always even when i listen to these podcasts if i get, if i can be in a stretch where i understand it and then i get a few words in a row that i don't understand then i lose the thread and so that's what's difficult and, and that's why you, you kind of have to have quite a few words actually in order to be able to follow along uh just out of curiosity is iraqi closer to gulf arabic or closer to you know syrian or whatever because they have neighbors on both sides. You got Kuwait or whatever on the one side, and you've got Syria on the other side, or Jordan, I guess. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Right. 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 Right, Khaliji, yeah, okay. Well, listen, uh, very good, you know, I, I was not able, I, I, I say, but, but you know, if I were to go to Iraq, but you understand me better than I understand you. Right, right, right. Right, right. Okay, all right. What I understood, okay. Okay, sure enough, sure enough. Uchut, what's Uchut? Oh, okay, Uchut, okay, yeah, Uchta, Uchta. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, uh, can't, uh, cannot, oh, cannot, okay, can't, okay. Mm-hmm. Tour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bilaraki Shemal, yeah, Rabambui. Mm-hmm. In Chan, what's in Chan again? Uh, Isma Rambambuni in Chan. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Chan. Oh, Can. Okay, Can is Chan. Okay. Mm hmm. Same word. Okay. Uh, Nesafil, I forgot. Like, Nesafil Kamila, I forgot the word. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. You lived in mountains alone. Uh, uh, the monk, or uh, Rabbabu is a monk. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll give you a child or a son or a daughter. Yeah, <laughs> it's difficult. Rukhat is to go, right? It's just, which is not in not in Fusa, but it's in in Lebanese and in yeah. Okay, you're not married. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
So you told your sister. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. Mm, mm-hmm. 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 What's hajar again? Okay, I don't know that word. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ah, ma at fall a lace at fall. Yeah, okay. Na la la deha. Okay. Right, right. Mm-hmm. A titch, yes, ouch titch, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tirdun? What's tir? Tirdun? Tirdun, okay. Ah, oh, to read. Okay, to read. Okay, tir. Tirdun, okay. Right. Tirdun, okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Aha, walk it. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What's Alasas? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Aha, Alasas. Yeah, Alasas. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. So you went to the monk. Uh, uh, anybody who understands Iraqi is having a ball, but everybody else is lost in this. But you visited this monk in the mountains, and if he bows his head three times or uh, towards a rock or something, then uh, you'll have a child, a daughter, or a son. You weren't married at the time, so you called your sister and asked her and she didn't have she and her husband uh, obviously they're married they didn't have any kids but then they she had to decide she hadn't thought about it but okay uh i want to i don't remember what she <laughs> wanted a daughter or a son but she didn't have, end up getting one but you did and you got two basically that's the story yeah so right okay oh so you 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 have to bow to the rock yeah Oh, slide down the face of the rock. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. But yeah, you were trying to... God hadn't factored in modern cell phone technology to, 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 in the story. Okay, well, listen, thank you for all of that. And uh, it was fun. And uh, we should do this again. But in the meantime, you know, uh, I should point out that John has a, uh, does a lot of work to help, uh, you know, Iraqis, other Arab speakers learn English. Uh, that's the main thrust of his website. And I've said, you know, we want to obviously improve our Arabic service, uh, our service either teaching Arabic or our interface in Arabic uh, for uh, Arabs, Arabic speakers who are learning other languages at Link. And we do have the contribute page at Link so that if there are Arabic speakers who can either contribute content, uh, stories like the story you just told, uh, in any form of Arabic, because we have now at Link, we have you know standard Arabic, we have Egyptian, we have uh, Levantine, 
uh, most welcome. And uh, if we can uh, perhaps work with you and some of your contacts in Iraq who want to improve their language skills, and maybe we can help them out in some way. Because I think Iraq is a, a fabulous country with tremendous history. And uh, from what I've seen too, quite a variety of landscapes. We think it's just one great big desert, which isn't the case. And a country that's had a tremendous amount of misfortune over the last little while. And uh, we uh, obviously wish them all the best. So, John, thank you very much.